in this video I want to talk about a further example of secondary dominance. So in the previous video we talked about secondary dominance, we revisited them, we've already kind of defined them last semester, but we revisited them, made sure we were clear on uh, what the secondary dominant was. I want to point out that especially in this semester when we start looking at common practice harmony, there is another type of chord that can act like a secondary dominant. Now in order to understand this, we need to understand that chords sometimes function like other chords. And that we've already covered in some other videos. We know that, for example, the two chord and the four chord can kind of substitute for one another. Where you would normally have a four chord, you can put a two chord in, and the two chord is sort of acting like the four chord. And we've observed that there are some other chords that do that same thing. Uh, that, for example, the seven chord often functions like the five chord. And because of that, it is logical to suggest that just as the five chord can be a dominant, so the seven could be a dominant. And if, therefore, you can have a secondary and dominant using the five chord of some other member of the scale, so five of two or five of five or whatever it might be, then it would make sense that you can also do the same with the seven chord of any member of the scale. And this is actually true. What you have to be aware of is the relationship, therefore. If we were in the key of C major, our, our seven chord would be B diminished. And that would, that's fairly logical. It, it's the diatonic seven chord. If you wanted to have the seven chord of any other member of the scale, you have to go a half step down from that particular member of the chord. So, if we were in C major and we wanted we would observe that our chords would be in C major C, then D minor, then E minor, then F, then G, then A minor, then B diminished. And we have no problem with that. That's just the chords as they would, as they exist in C major. If we wanted to have a secondary dominant of any of these, we would have to find the dominant of D, the dominant of E. So if we wanted a secondary dominant of E, we would say, the dominant in E is B, so B7 would be my secondary dominant of E. And that's how we would work that out. If we want to use the 7 chord of any of these to act like a dominant, which is what it can do, then we have to go a half step below. We'd have to say, okay, the 7 in D minor would be C sharp diminished. The 7 in G minor would be, or in G major, it doesn't matter, the 7 in G would be F sharp diminished. So we can then insert in between here, just like we can insert a secondary dominant using a 5 dominant to tonic relationship, we can also in insert a secondary dominant using a 7 relationship, 7 to 1. If we were doing 5 to 1, then in front of D, it would be A7, because A is the dominant. If we were using the 7 chord, then it would be C sharp, fully diminished 7, because C sharp is the dominant, is the 7 of D minor. So depending on which of these you want to use, you have to use a different relationship, but it's essentially still a dominant to tonic relationship. So let's go over here and look at a couple of examples so we can kind of see it a little bit more in context. Let's imagine that we took these chords, we found these chords in a piece of music. Most of these chords we have no problem with. If we were in G major, then we would say this is a one chord, this is a two chord, this is a five chord, five seven, and this is a one chord. We don't have any problem with that because we know those chords and they all fit in the key. This is the one that's a bit tricky. As soon as we see G sharp fully diminished seven, if it's not the seven chord, the only diminished chord we have in, in major is the seven chord. And if this is not the seven chord, if it is not, in other words, in G major, if it's not an F sharp diminished seven chord, then, there, then there's something chromatically going on. So we start to look for ourselves, is there a relationship between these two? Well, there is. If you were in A minor, then G sharp would be your seven. And G sharp fully diminished seven would be a seven to 1 in A minor. 
And because you can have a 7 to 1, it's like, it's, a, it's substituting the 7 chord for the 5 chord, it works like a dominant, then you can do the same with secondary dominance. And this becomes a 7, fully diminished 7 of not 1, but whatever A minor is in the key, which is 2. So a fully diminished 7 of 2. Similar situation down here. Let's look again. We're, this time we're in D major, and we're fairly clear on that. So now we have a 1, 5, no problem, questionable chord, 6, 2, 5, 1. Most of these chords we have no problem with. They work fine. There's nothing about them that is unusual or non-diatonic. It's this A sharp, diminished, fully diminished 7 chord that seems a little strange. What's it doing in the middle of here? It's not the, the fully diminished 7 you expect in D, which would be a C sharp fully diminished 7 chord. It is instead a, or even a half diminished 7, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, F, the A sharp is an unusual chord, it shouldn't be in the key. But if we look at it in relation to B minor, indeed, if we were in B minor, this would be a 7 to 1 relationship. That would work. 7 to 1 in B minor would be fine. We would just say, okay, there's just the 7 chord working like the 5 chord, no problem. But we're not in B minor. B minor is not 1, it is 6. So this is not a 7 to 1, but a 7 fully diminished 7 of 6, because B minor is 6 in this key, and this is a secondary dominant, not, not a primary dominant. So hopefully you see, the idea is it's very similar, it's almost exactly the same as 5 to 1, and a secondary dominant using 5, it's just that instead of 5, it's 7, which means the actual relationship between the diatonic chord and the secondary dominant is a little different, where there's a 5 to 1 relationship here, there has to be a 7 to 1 relationship when you're using the 7 chord. This, for a secondary dominant, would have a as its dominant, so you would use A7 for this type of secondary dominant, but if you were using a 7 as the secondary dominant, you have to find the 7 chord as though you were in D minor, which would be a C sharp, and that would mean you would use the fully diminished 7 chord built on C sharp to be a secondary dominant using a 7 to 1 relationship. We will look, watch the video again if you need to. Really kind of think this through, see if you can get your head around it, see if you can come up with a few examples like this that might work, and uh, bring your questions to class. And we will see if we can handle this situation and figure out the details of this a little bit in class if we need to. But the principle is really very similar to secondary dominance using the 5 chord. We're just instead using a 7 to 1 relationship instead of a 5 to 1 relationship. Thank you.